Hi, I'm Shoestring Jane. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me again. Don't forget, if you like money related content, please do subscribe and don't forget to give me a thumbs up at the end if you've enjoyed this video as well. Just before I begin, let me just show you who I've got next to me. We curled up on the sofa together because it's really cold and drab and dark and I've got a blanket on my knees and it's just cold today. It's just, it feels like it might snow actually. It's got that kind of feel to the weather. So you have a different view of the lounge today. So anyway, what I talk about today is assumptions about frugal people. And some of these before I became a frugal person would have been my assumptions about frugal people. The first one being that frugal people are mean. And this, like the other assumptions that I'm going to go through, is incorrect. Because, okay, some people, I'm not saying some frugal people aren't frugal because they're mean, but the majority of frugal folk that I come across aren't mean at all. They're not skin flints. They aren't miserly at all in their approach to life. They're very kind and, and generous with their time and their money. Um, but they are thoughtful about it. So being frugal isn't about being mean and stingy. It's about knowing what you want to do with your money, knowing what you want to achieve with your money and being thoughtful about how you spend it. So it's got to be a conscious consumer rather than just thinking, I'm going to buy this and impulse buying everything and needing to have the latest of everything. It's about appreciating what you have and using your money more wisely, as wisely as you possibly can to get the best value for your money. So it's it's that's what most frugal folk are like. So the first one on my list is that frugal people are mean and stingy and they're not. So the second assumption about frugal people that I would dispute is that they're boring. They don't go anywhere and they don't do anything. Um, I hope I've shown through my weekly vlogs that that's not the case. You know, we, we have days out all the time. We don't necessarily go a long way and we don't do anything expensive necessarily, but we do occasionally. So occasionally we'll have a splurge and we will do something like go to the theatre or have a day trip to London or something that will be a bit more expensive, have a nice meal out as part of that day. But most of the time we don't go to the pub all the time, we rarely eat out, and we kind of look at frugal substitutes, to uh, ways to do those types of things, but without spending lots of money, so we can do them more regularly. So we might have friends around for dinner, we might go to friends for dinner, when you invite them around you tend to get a return invitation, and that's cheaper and quite often nicer, and certainly safer sometimes, than going out to a restaurant. Um, so we'll, we're looking at strategically substituting things that might cost a lot of money with things that don't. So we'll look for free events. Um, when you start to look for free events in your local area, you'll be surprised at the number that come up or very inexpensive events and things that you can go to that don't cost you very much money at all. Um, quite a lot of the things that we do don't cost anything at all anyway, apart from the petrol to get there. Um, we'll have lots of lovely walks. We love to explore the local area. Um, that's something we've been doing for the past year or so, really, just really taking a look at somewhere we think we know and looking at those unusual out-of-the-way places that we didn't really know were there or we were vaguely aware that were there, but we haven't really taken the time and made the effort to go and look at them. So it's the sort of the sort of places that you would probably go to if you were a tourist coming to the area. But if you live with that every day, you don't necessarily appreciate it or go and visit it. So we've been doing that. And then what we'll do is take our co coffee, we'll take a flask with us, and we'll take lunch if we're going to be out over lunch. Um, and we'll sit and eat it somewhere lovely. I mean, we've got lots of lovely coastline in Essex. We're really lucky. So a good day out is to have a good walk along the coast with the dog. We will sit and have a coffee somewhere really lovely, like a real beauty spot and have our lunch maybe. And, you know, again, we that's sort of 
areas that we think we know but then there's lots of little tucked away places that we've discovered that we've not really explored and that really doesn't cost very much and it's really quite satisfying when you realize what's in your local area so we do that often when we go on holiday we rather than just booking the first package holiday we will really research accommodation so we'll be looking at airbnbs we'll be looking at those little out of the way caravan sites and and different ways of getting accommodation and seeing if there's a cheaper way to to do it so we'll end up in the same places as somebody who's gone straight to a really expensive hotel and would be doing the same sites as them but we'll have paid an awful lot less for our accommodation and um, and people will assume that as a frugal person you don't go on holiday but you know we go on holiday a lot we we love traveling we like going away we used to go a bit further afield pre-pandemic and I expect we will do that at some point in the future but for now we're going fairly local staying within the UK and we love places like Wales and we want to get to Scotland but Wales is a favourite it's not too far away and we, I say it's a good five hour drive but you know it's just a stunning stunningly beautiful place and if you get decent weather somewhere like Wales you think my goodness, you know, I could be paying a fortune to go somewhere else and not appreciate what we have here in the UK. So wherever you are in the world, obviously this doesn't just apply to the UK, there are lots of beautiful areas that you can explore. And I did a little thing on the Facebook group that I run, My Second Hand and Frugal Life recently, where I said to everybody, let's share a lovely picture of a place in your local area that you would say to somebody who is a tourist in your area they've got to go and see or it's worth them going to have a look and we all put photographs with a little explanation everywhere it was it was international not just in the UK and it was beautiful and it was lovely it was like going on a virtual holiday so you can pick up that thread if you have a look on my Facebook group you'll need to join and ask, ask answer the questions as well but um, it's just a really nice thing to do and it just shows you what you have on your, your local doorstep so frugal people do get out and about they do lots of things they're not boring they just know how to get out and about on a budget the next incorrect assumption about frugal people is that they're always really poor um i mean i'm i'm not disputing that there are people who are frugal because they have no choice and their choice is either to be frugal and manage their money really really well or to get into debt so there are quite a lot of people like that on a low income i'd probably count myself as one of them you know if i'm not fruit if i'm not careful with my money then it wouldn't go very far and i might end up in trouble but as it is we live a really good and happy life so um not everybody who's frugal does so because they're poor they do it because they have goals um, and I don't know if you've ever read The Millionaire Next Door. Um, I can't think who the author is now. I'll put it in the link. Um, but it's just a, a kind of story of the different different people around the US who actually were all millionaires but weren't fancy at all and had done it very quietly just through careful housekeeping and management of their money um, and ended up, you know, being able to retire quite early and that kind of thing. So... That's the kind of goal that I'm talking about. Perhaps you are frugal because you do want to retire early. There's that whole FIRE movement that I've spoken about before, financial independence, retire early, where, you know, quite a lot of young professionals are thinking, well, OK, well, my, my job's OK, but I don't necessarily want to be shackled to this for the rest of my life. And they are making careful choices they are saving as much money as they can they're investing and they're living frugally so that they can retire young and do what they want and have a lot of freedom and there's a lot to be said about that and it's a concept I wish I'd known about when I was younger or with house prices being so high a lot of people's goal is to save a deposit for a home or save towards a mortgage so all their frugal in order to pay off their mortgage early and that kind of thing um you might be saving for university fees because you know that's expensive and some people don't like having that student debt hanging over them you maybe are saving to travel and we did that a lot in the past had some good really good trips um but we had to save up for them you know it's great if you've got a massive disposable income and you can just go on a cruise around the world but for most of us that requires some planning and some saving so maybe that is one of your goals or maybe you just want to 
lower the hour, number of hours you work. Perhaps you are a parent and you would like to spend more time with your children um, and you would like to just go part time and work fewer hours, hours. So living a more frugal lifestyle will enable you to do that. So I knew somebody whose goal in life was to buy and keep a horse. And if you've got a horse, you'll know that that's not an inexpensive hobby or pastime. But that's what she wanted to do. It gave her great pleasure. She really enjoyed doing that. And so she was frugal in other areas of her life in order to keep her horse. So another assumption that you might have about frugal people is that they just don't have anything nice and they wear old shabby clothes and have shabby homes. And that's not true, although personally I go for that kind of shabby chic look. Um, I don't care about fashion particularly, but I know a lot of people that do. My daughter, for example, my youngest daughter particularly, she will see something full price in a shop, like she, she loves Topshop, things are quite expensive in there. She'll see them and then she will actively look out for them on eBay and Vinted. And the times that she's found them, it's almost as if it's this law of attraction thing, the times she has found exactly what she wants, second hand or a ridiculously good sale price at the end of the season i i can't count them really there's this that's happened numerous on numerous occasions so she's an example of a frugal person who has lots of nice things and dresses really nicely um i think the thing with frugal people is oh, my laptop sliding towards me <laughs> is that they know how to get a bargain um, they don't waste things. They will research and look for different prices until they find what they want. Um, they might save up to buy something really expensive, but they'll make sure it's at the best price still and that it's really good quality and it's going to last them a long time. So they might have a house full of really beautiful quality furniture, but perhaps they bought it second hand. It might still have been quite expensive, but they've saved up for it. Or you know, my daughter, my second daughter, for example, she has the most gorgeous chest of drawers, which um, is a vintage chest of drawers. And it's now a piece that she'll take with her and, and keep for ages. It wasn't cheap, but it was much nicer quality than something that perhaps came flat packed from a cheap shop. Maybe, maybe would have cost 30 or 40 pounds and would have lasted probably you know she's going to move flat soon she probably would have it would have got damaged during the move because it was flimsy and bad quality and the one she's got is a real good solid piece and i can see her still having this piece of furniture 20 30 years down the line so that's the thing about frugal people is that they know how to get a bargain and they know how to buy quality so they just are aware of the value of the nice things that they have. They don't waste stuff. And they don't feel like they need to keep replacing everything every five minutes to keep in fashion. They just have quality, timeless, classic things. And that could apply to clothing or cars or um, furniture or, you know, anything. So frugal people do have lots of nice things quite often. They just don't pay full price for them. Which brings me on to my final assumption, and that is that frugal people always buy the cheapest and nastiest. So as well as the aforementioned things like furniture, um, it might be that although I will trade down, and I will always try supermarket own brands, the value brands, I'll always give them a try. I won't normally always stick to those because if I, they're not to my taste, then I will go up and sometimes I will buy a brand. So um, an example is coffee. I have one cup of coffee most days. I really like Milicano. It's not massively expensive, but it's a lot more expensive than a big jar of coffee that I could buy in Lidl. And it tastes a lot better, but I like it. So frugal people don't always buy the cheapest. They buy what they want and then they'll buy a lot cheaper where they can. So I don't care what type of bleach I have. As far as I go, if I buy bleach to go down the loo, it's going down the loo. I'm not going to buy a brand name at four times the price of the cheapest one I can get in the supermarket. Um, so that uh, things like baked beans. For me, value baked beans are a bit watery, not, not so great. But Aldi or Lidl's own baked beans are as good as Heinz. In fact, I'd probably prefer them. So Frugal people don't always buy the cheapest 
and they don't always buy cheap and nasty. So they'll buy quality, they'll buy what they like, they'll perhaps skimp on things that aren't that important to them, but they don't always buy just the cheapest for the sake of buying it. And going back to the furniture example I gave earlier, you know, they don't just buy the cheapest bit of flat pack that they can. They will perhaps save up and buy, if they want a new piece of furniture, they'll buy a better quality piece of furniture. So I bought some pine furniture a good 10, 15 years ago now. And it was really expensive, but it was really, really well made. So that has travelled, I think, via, this is the third house that the furniture has been in. And I recently upcycled some of it in my bedroom makeover. I'll try to link that if I remember it. Um, so after all this time, I've decided to give it a new lease of life, but it's still the same piece of furniture. So because I bought decent quality from a local supplier, I was able to do that. If I'd bought a flat pack and had to put it together myself, I don't think it would have lasted all this time and it wouldn't have been worth upcycling. So it's worth buying quality and frugal people do realise the value of that. And the key thing is with all of these assumptions and the fact of me saying that they're incorrect assumptions is that being frugal isn't about deprivation. It's about control and it's about making the best use of the resources you have to live a satisfied and content and happy life. So it doesn't mean giving up on doing and having the things that you like. It's about being creative and finding more frugal substitutes wherever you can um, to make the best use and make your money stretch as far as you possibly can. So you do still do what you want. You still have the things you want. You just do it on a budget. It's just a different way of looking at things. So if you are a frugalist, or frugalista? Do you have people making assumptions about you? Do you have people calling you a skin flint? Do you have people assuming that you're mean? What kind of assumptions have you had from other people who aren't, who don't share your kind of frugal habits about the way you live? Or, you know, if you're not frugal, if you're just getting into this kind of frugal journey, what assumptions do you have about frugal people? Share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear that and start the discussion. And in the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, please do give me the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for similar content in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.